All right, welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. A couple of announcements uh, real quick is a Life for the Lost celebration tour. It's no longer a banquet. It is a celebration tour. Apparently they thought that young people would not come to it if it was called a banquet. So they call it a celebration tour. Anyways, that is happening March 23rd. It'll be at Dexter First. And so that's a change from all the other years where it's been in Malden. And so, like I say, it'll be at Dexter First on March 23rd, I believe at 7 o'clock. Uh, we don't have tickets for that or anything like that quite yet, but I was just giving you a heads up since locations have changed. And then also, I wanted to uh, bring something to your attention, is there is a homecoming uh, concert at um, Braggadocia Crossroads Church featuring uh, Gene McDonald and Gordon Moat. Apparently, they were with uh, the Gaither Homecoming a few years ago, and so that is this Saturday, uh, January 14th at 6 p.m. There's, there is a uh, no charge to uh, get in, but there will be a free will offering taken that night, so if you would like to go see, uh, if you like uh, the Gaithers and, you know, uh, and that, um, I'm sure that'll be a great concert. Also on Saturday, um, we have men's breakfast at 8 o'clock. Uh, it'll be in Holcomb, and so if you'd like to uh, join me, um, It'll be there at, um, we'll leave here at the church at 7.15 uh, in the morning, on Saturday morning. So, but um, without uh, any further ado, let's pray and we'll get into the uh, Bible study tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. Lord, we thank you for the ability to be able to look into your word and to see what your word uh, has to show about these different religions and in light of, the, in light of your word. And so, Lord, we ask that, uh, that we would truly do that, shed light upon these false religions, and shed, uh, shed the light of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Last week I talked about Islam, Islam in light of the Bible, and this week I'm going to uh, go on with part two of that as well, because there's a lot more uh, that is there besides just what I talked about last week. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to be in Galatians again, Galatians chapter 1, and I want to read those uh, the verses again that I read last week, which is, I marvel that Ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there, uh, there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have uh, preached unto you, let him be accursed. As uh, we said before, so I, I, I say now again, if any man preach another gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. Lord, I pray, pray that tonight that the seed of your word would find fertile soil upon our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. The reason why uh, tonight we're starting uh, without any kind, of, uh, you know, any kind of songs or anything like that is because the possibility of being able for you to ask any questions that you uh, may have at the end of the night. So that way... Um, uh, I'll leave, so hopefully leave some room in there, depending on how long I preach, but, you know, who knows, I might just take the whole hour and just, you know, do it that way, too. So a little recap, uh, recap from last week. We saw that in the Quran, this is in the book of the cow, uh, chapter 2, verse 25, it says, uh, it says that they proclaim joyful tidings. And so what they're presenting is they're, they are presenting, even in that one verse, they are presenting another gospel. And this is their gospel, which is to submit to Allah and to do good works in order to be saved. So in order for them, they must submit. That's actually what Islam means, to submit. Muslim means uh, those who submit to Allah. So it all kind of goes together on that. And what they do is that they must believe you know, in Allah and do everything that he wants to do. In other words, you must do good works in order to be saved. Even at that point... Even in that whole entire, you could do all the good works in the world, but if you have one more bad work that you did in your life, you, you know, one more time that you did evil, God's going to let you go to hell. And so that's, it is a, I mean, it's just weird and out there. There's also the fact that they, they uh, preach, a, you know, besides the fact that it's a false gospel, it's a false perverse gospel of Muhammad's sick mind, like the fact of allowing pedophilia and saying that's okay. Because he was a child molester, you know, in other words, he was a reprobate. He was the fact that he listened to his, his housekeeper 
saying that, you know what, you should go ahead and marry this woman or this six-year-old. And he says, you know what I'll do? I'll marry both. And so he marries a six-year-old and consummates uh, that marriage when she is nine years old. The other part of it is, is that they say, if you don't convert, we will kill you. So if you ever come across one, that's one of the ones that I, um, I think I mentioned last week when I was uh, speaking with a Muslim, we had talked you know, for a few weeks, and, and I just came out and asked him, I said, sir, shouldn't you have killed me by now? And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, your holy book says that, you know, since I have not converted to Islam, that you are supposed to kill me because I'm an infidel, you're supposed to take my head. And he said, although that's only just for the really extreme ones. And so he didn't deny the fact that it was in there. He didn't deny it, you know, the fact that that's part of the Quran and which it is. Also, the fact is that now that we have, you know, for us, we know that we have the gospel, the grace of Christ, that salvation is of faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. No man can boast before God because he has faith and works. The Bible teaches that salvation is by what? Faith alone. But to him, uh, and in Romans uh, chapter 4 it says, But to him that worketh not, be, uh, but believe on him that justify the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also des uh, describes the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth a righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. That's verses 5 and 7 in Romans chapter 4. Well, we need to, you know, last week, I, I, you know, I told you there was five pillars of Islam. I believe I only gave you two. The five pillars of Islam, the first one is the declaration of faith. That's like believing in Allah. You've got to have that declaration of faith. The second pillar is prayer, and you must pray five times a day. And that's not including lunches and meals and all that kind of stuff. You got to pray five times a day. The third pillar is alms giving. You got to you know give back. You got to give money towards you know the mosque and all that kind of stuff. The fourth one is fasting. That is like why they have the month of Ramadan when they you know will, they will all fast during that time. And they and there's loopholes that they get around all these kind of things. You know some will say, oh, is it when the you know it's supposed to be at sunset, but like is it as the sun is setting, or is it when the sun is completely set, or is it you know when it's completely gone. I mean, just all these kind of loopholes we'll try and figure out to get around having to fast as long. The fifth pillar is the pilgrimage to Mecca. They must at least make one pilgrimage to Mecca over in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. They have to make at least one pilgrimage all the way over there to visit, and I refer, and I refer to it as the GameCube. They'll go over there you know, to go visit the, uh, the Kaaba, as they call it. I want to go over a little bit of the history I went over a little bit, but I'm going to go over a little bit more. Islam is, it began in Saudi Arabia in the 7th century under the uh, teaching of Muhammad, who, who Muslims believe it was God's final prophet. The name of Islam is, uh, the name of the religion is Islam, and the people who follow are Muslims, and the God is Allah, right? All right. Muhammad claimed, this is, I'm going to go over this a little bit more in depth. He claimed that a supernatural being visited now, I didn't realize this. He actually didn't realize who the supernatural being was until somebody had to tell him who it was. All right? And I'll get to that here in a moment. Claimed that a supernatural being visited him in a cave while he was meditating and told him, read or recite. But Muhammad uh, told the spirit being he couldn't read. Yet two more times he told Muhammad to read or recite. Finally, Muhammad uh, finally, he told Muhammad to recite, and he gave, uh, gave him some verses to memorize. When he says, you know, gave it to him, he shoved it in his mouth. That's, that's what they say that happened. He says that literally this spirit being, or as he says, was, you know, was an angel, Gabriel, told him and shoved these words in his mouth. When this first encounter was over, Muhammad thought he had been visited by a demon. That's his first initial thought. I was visited by a demon. He became depressed and suicidal. But his wife and his cousin, or her cousin, convinced him he had been visited by the angel Gabriel. So she didn't want him to be all depressed. She didn't want him to be all suicidal. She was like, no, it's okay. 
you weren't visited by a demon, you were visited by an angel that made you do things that you didn't want to do. Muhammad continued to, yes, ma'am. Yes. I get that here in a moment because Muslims do believe in certain parts of the Old Testament. And so he knows about Gabriel from the Old Testament. So that's the reason why he knows. He's got a very, very skewed view of uh, who Gabriel is, but yeah, he, he has an idea. All right. Three years later, I mean, uh, sorry, throughout his lifetime, he'll have these visits, these visitations from this angel over and over again. Three years later, he began preaching in the city of Mecca that, uh, that there was no God but Allah. Most people in Mecca who worshipped idols of multiple, uh, multiple gods scoffed at his message. So even in Mecca, you know, they really didn't like his message. But he gathered a few disciples, and some of whom were persecuted. They actually ended up leaving Mecca for a period of time due to the persecution and went to Medina. So the place where he, you know, this is, you know, the holy city of Mecca didn't actually even receive him at you know, first. They didn't like his message. There's a couple that did, but most of them said no. And this is a bunch of pagans that didn't even like him. So in 622, Muhammad and his followers moved all the way out to Mecca, or sorry, out to Medina, which had a large Jewish population, and they were more receptive to the monotheism or the belief in one God. So the uh, people out there in Medina were Jewish, they had a large Jewish population, and they liked the fact that he was talking about one God. Now, you, you begin to wonder, you go, why are Jewish people listening to this? Because, you know, at that time, obviously, there was, uh, Christianity was exploding, and so for them, you know, they, they wanted any kind of way to, to be able to stop Christianity from growing. And they looked at the fact that, you know, even them, they may have said that the Christians were, were worshiping three gods instead of, you know, the Trinity, the triune God. They didn't understand it. So this journey is, um, as he goes on, after seven years in Medina, Muhammad's followers had grown and they were strong enough to return and conquer Mecca. So he comes back to Mecca, you know, where he had preached, and then later on he would die in 632. So basically this whole time, is it like 10 years that he's around? 10 years in Medina. And so in Medina, became a very Muslim place. Then the Muslims in Medina decided that they were going to, by revelation of God, to go uh, by revelation of God to Muhammad, start raiding the caravans of Mecca. So what does that word raiding mean? Raiding a caravan? It means you're stealing stuff. You have these people that are, who are trying to, you know, go out, they're doing their business, they're making money, they're making a livelihood, they're working and trading, and then all of a sudden they're attacked by Muslims who come down and swoop down and steal their stuff. That's not very biblical, is it? Because you know uh, stealing's okay in the Bible, right? No, it's not. And so they go on there and they begin to steal all this stuff and they begin to go through. Because remember, the, uh, the Quran is a continuation, a supposed continuation of the Bible, the Old, uh, the Old New Testament. They say it's a continuation. But remember, if it ever contradicts the Bible, what's the answer? The Bible is corrupt. The Bible is corrupt in that area. The Bible is corrupt in that area. Not the Quran, never, but the Bible is corrupt. Eventually, they would take control of Mecca once again. They also uh, got control of the GameCube, as I refer to it. If you've never seen the GameCube, or the Kaaba, as it's called, is a giant black cube that they had there. The Kaaba is, uh, is a, it's, like I said, a giant cube that supposedly they claim is the house of God. That's what that's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the house of God that is a holy shrine. Now remember, they say that they don't believe in idols. But shrines are okay. Okay? They believe it, it was originally built by Abraham and Ishmael. Do you ever remember seeing that in the Bible? Abraham and Ishmael being able building a giant GameCube? I mean, giant black box? Yeah. So here's what, you know, but here's what's uh, interesting about the Kaaba. The Kaaba had already existed before Muhammad came along. It was something that the pagan polytheistic or the one, those believing in many gods, you know, the, uh, at that time, worshipped their gods to. 
So they had all these idols and false gods in the, uh, the Kaaba. And remember, they don't worship idols, right? Or false gods. But yet the Kaaba, the one thing that they come there and they acknowledge this is the house of God, has all that inside of it. So what they did was they kept adopting and keeping all these traditions of the wicked pagans that were around them. They didn't change anything. They just adopted it and made it more universally, universally accepted. It's like, it like, you know what, if you can't beat them, join them. But just rename it to where it, it would actually be okay for you. You know, be okay for Muhammad and his followers. So the, the Kaaba was originally a pagan Arab shrine to their false gods. That's what it was. Islam spread rapidly after Muhammad's death. As his disciples grew increasingly powerful with successful military conquest of most of the Middle East. Now, do you ever see that Christianity grows through military conquests? Now, last time I checked, you know, the Bible says to love your enemies. The Bible says, you know, that, you know, that if one smites us on the cheek, we are to do what? Turn the other cheek. Or do we have it wrong? You know, because as it goes on, you know, uh, these conquests were not uh, just in the Middle East. They were in uh, North, uh, North Africa, parts of Asia, and Southern Europe. They just kept on going on through these military conquests. Remember, if you, don't, if you can't join them, they're going to beat you. I mean, kill you. I mean, the people, the, 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 the people conquered by the Muslims had to a choice, convert to Islam or pay a large fee. If they couldn't pay the fee, they would be enslaved or executed. So Islam became the dominant religion of, the, uh, of most of the Middle East and North Africa. And it still is in that same area, right? It's still all, all over in that same spot, in that same area. It makes me kind of wonder why the U.S. is so um, focused on Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, obviously, is where Mecca is, where, you know, where, you know, where Islam is known for. But that's another point. But here's the question. You know, some people will say, well, Muslims are, are they're, they're saved. They just, they just believe different. They, they all believe in, we believe in one God. They believe in one God. It's all the same. We just have different ways of calling him God. This is the ones that I've heard. Namely, the Pope has said this. The Pope has said that Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, all these ones have one God that they're worshiping, they just call them by different names. It, it was just a different revelation of Christ. And here's the sad reality. Also, Billy Graham made that same proclamation. If you don't believe me, just go on YouTube and type it up. I can guarantee you'll find it. Billy Graham himself said, we all were given different light and given different names for God. That's a sad reality because there's a lot of people you know, that, you know, that love Billy Graham. But yet he was one of the ones that was... Uh, endorsing it as well. So the reason why the Muslims aren't saved, they're not Christians, is why? Because they believe in salvation is by, uh, is by belief in works. They don't believe in that Jesus Christ is God, but that he is only a prophet. He was only a prophet, that's all he was. It, they believe that basically God lied and hid the whole fact of his death, burial, and resurrection. They, they were saying that was somebody else. God had, had somebody else killed, that he would never kill one of his own prophets. And that's what, they, that's what they, they believe. They believe that God substituted somebody else for Jesus. And God uh, also doesn't have, any, uh, doesn't have any children. He doesn't have a son. That's what they will tell you. They also believe that they don't need a Savior. They believe salvation depends on God's mercy, and he decides who he will forgive, so there's actually no real assurance of salvation at all. Remember, I was talking about the fact of whether or not you do good works. You got it on one side, you know, side of the scale, and you got your bad works on one side over here. And depending on you know, whether or not uh, you've done more good works than bad works, that's how you get to heaven. But the other part is that as you're descending into hell, so you're descending into hell while, they're, you know, while God's weighing whether or not you've been good enough. So you're falling, probably screaming. And then if you made it at the last second, God's hand of mercy will just come and pick you up and bring you up into heaven or their version of heaven. That's what they believe. Now, I don't, I don't want you to think that there's not any similarities, because there are similarities. 
Remember, as I said before, false religions will take truth, but then they will twist it. So they'll take certain parts of Christianity that they like, but then they'll twist them. And you'll find out a little bit later on, and I'll just tell you right now, that uh, Jewish rabbis actually helped them do this. So you have Jewish rabbis helping the Muslims be able to twist Scripture so that way it looks like it's godly. So the Quran, here's the similarities. The Quran recognizes some of the biblical prophets. This is what, uh, this is what you were asking, Inclu- uh, including Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, Joseph, John the Baptist, and the angel Gabriel. They believe Jesus was a prophet. The Quran teaches that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, that he performed miracles, healing the sick and raising the dead, and that he will return from heaven on the day of judgment and destroy the Antichrist. I knew you would. Yes. That's that's for that's for God to decide. That's for God. They probably would have they probably would have said that you know God did the miracle, but they would never say that it was His Son. Mm-hmm. You're just now you know you know gathering that or? No, you're fine. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, that's a good question. It's like, okay, if they believe in the virgin birth, then, you know, then who was, you know, like you said, who was the dad? And they just would say, I mean, they would just probably just say that God did it, but he's not, you know, there's no way that God has, you know, no, there's no way that God has a son. That, that's how they put it. So both, and both Christianity and Islam believe that Satan is evil and tries to deceive people and lure them away from God. So there is some, you see how there are similarities in there, but you see how they, they, then they begin to twist it as they go. One of the other things is, is that Islam actually represses women. There's only one woman mentioned in the entire Quran, Mary. The Bible, I believe, uh, when I looked online, I believe it was either 166 or 186 uh, different women are mentioned in, in the Bible alone, in the Bible. So let's look at what the Quran teaches about Muhammad and Jesus, all right? In the Quran, the Quran teaches that Muhammad was a man, he was not God, that he was God's last prophet, thus he has the final say on theology. That's how, that's how they get around the whole fact, well, the Bible is corrupt, it's because Muhammad had to come along and correct it. Muhammad's revelation is conflicted with the Bible, so... Muslims say that the Bible was corrupted and changed over time. Uh, Muhammad died a natural death and stayed dead. That's a good thing to realize because why? Our Savior is not dead. Amen. Uh, Muslims believe he will be the first to rise from the dead on the day of judgment. Muslims believe that Muhammad never willfully sinned. Never willfully sinned, but he did. But he did make unintentional mistakes. Someone calls them today oopsies. So that must have been the whole pedophilia thing. Oh, I didn't know that was unintentional. <laughs> the Quran teaches that Muhammad was God's messenger, but not the Messiah or the Savior. So that's what they teach in there. All right. Let's look at what the Bible teaches about Jesus. The Bible teaches that Jesus is God, that he existed from infinity, and that he is the creator. You can see this in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. The Trinity is uh, one God in three persons, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. 1 John 5, 7, John 1, 1 through 3, John ch- uh, chapter 10, uh, verse 30, chapter 14, verses 9 through 11, Chapter 15, verse 5, chapter 16, verse 13 through 15, and chapter 17, verse 21. That's just, I mean, it's, that, that's only a few. Jesus, uh, Jesus existed as God, then emptied himself and became a man and died on the cross. 
Then God highly exalted him, as, it, as we read last week in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 11. The Bible teaches that Jesus is the exact rep- representation of God's nature, and after he died to purify us from our sins and rose from the dead, he is now sitting at the, right, uh, at the Father's right hand and interceding for us. Amen? By contrast, the Quran denies that Jesus was crucified at all and claims that Jesus was no more than a messenger of Allah and his word. I don't know what, I don't know what, I, I don't, I, like I said, I, I think he needs to go, I think we need to go back to the fact that, you know, that Muhammad was, Muhammad was right. He was demon possessed. Don't listen, don't listen to your wife or her cousin. That was not Gabriel. Or his housekeeper about pedophilia. All these things. Let's look up uh, Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10 says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. He is the creator, amen? He laid all the foundations. That's why, you know, it's kind of funny when people, you know, say that, well, you know, Jesus didn't exist. Because there, there are Christian denominations out there that say that Jesus didn't exist until the nativity. No, Jesus has always been. He's from everlasting. That's what the Bible teaches. I mean, who do you think was walking around with him, you know, uh, in the fire with, you know, uh, Madrak, Meshach, and Abednego? Who do you think it was walking around with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day? I mean, all these ones. I mean, who do you think you know uh, Melchizedek is? Melchizedek. Read it in uh, read it in Je- uh, Genesis. Talks about the. Don't worry. These are all in different times where Jesus appears in the Old Testament, but yet they say that Jesus, some people say that Jesus didn't exist until the Nativity. That all of a sudden that that was like the birth of no, He's God. He's always existed. He's always been around. He's, he's he, like it says here, he's from infinity. You say, well, how's that possible? You know what? Sometimes things are beyond our comprehension, but that's just the truth. He always is, always has been, and always will be God. The ones that have a beginning and an end is us. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. You say somebody, uh, you know, like tonight, you know, somebody say, well, you know, duh, this seems very, you know, very easy to understand, you know, to us. But like I said, the reason why I'm doing these is because that way when you go out and you're able to, you know, and you have a conversation with someone who's a Muslim, you're able to understand where they're coming from and you can share your faith. I'm trying to strengthen you so that way you know where to go and what they believe so you're not blindsided. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 says this, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took uh, upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the, de- uh, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, and of things in heaven, and things in the earth, and things under the earth. And that, uh, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. In everything, Jesus Christ is God. He is God. And yet they want to they try to minimize him or make him less than what he actually is. You know the reason why they can't minimize who he is? Because there's more, there's more historical evidence to show that Jesus Christ lived than that of Abraham Lincoln. And we know, that, we know who Abraham Lincoln is, but we have pictures of him. Just so you know, the pictures that we have, you know, some people have of Jesus on their wall is not Jesus. That's some sort of artist interpretation back in the Renaissance period that, you know, said, hey, Jesus is white with curly, you know, like brown curly hair, kind of wavy, 
the little beauty patch and sash. That's not what Jesus looked like. I'm just telling you, that's not at all what Jesus looked like. He had blue eyes. I mean, you would think at least, at least, you know, coming from the Middle East, they would try to give him like olive skin. But he was probably a little bit darker than that. Just saying. Let's look at their look at the afterlife. Obviously, the Bible says that if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. That's our assurance, right? If we believe on him, we put our full faith and our trust in Jesus Christ, we are saved. That's why the Bible says in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen? Now, Muslims believe that Allah will weigh sins against good deeds on the day of judgment. And as I said before, if the sins outweigh virtuous deeds, or the oopsies, the person will be punished. Hell is the punishment. I believe they pronounce it uh, Jahannam, Jahannam, one of the two. Hell is the punishment for unbelievers, anyone not a Muslim. But, always a little catch, right? And for the Muslims who commit major sins without repentance and confession to God. I mean, pedophilia is okay. So, I say pedoph pedophilia is okay. So, I mean, lying to the uh, lying to the infidel is okay. They believe that you know that you know that's fine. Most Muslims believe sinful Muslims go to hell for a while to, believe, uh, to be punished for their sins, but later go to paradise. Something kind of like the Catholic purgatory. You know how that, how that kind of works. I mean, when you're writing this stuff, you just make it up as you go along, right? Well, we don't want the Muslims to go to hell. Yes, you can be punished if you commit a major sin, but we'll let you out. I, 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 don't, I don't even... I, I just want to say I don't even know what, what I'm... Maybe the sun got to Muhammad. Not Jesus, but the actual sun was like beating down on him. He was, you know, he just passed out and got possessed by a demon. While, uh, uh, sorry, while Muslims hold to the Pentateuch, that that's the first five books of the Bible known as the Law, the Psalms, and the Gospels. The book that is the undisputed authority for their faith is the Quran. They will, they trust in those ones that I told you. But remember, when it conflicts with the Quran, it's the Bible to them that is corrupt and that was changed. The writers, the writers of the Quran were influenced by Jewish rabbis and lifted many uh, passages from the Old Testament, reworking them into the context of Islam. Isn't that convenient? Isn't that wonderful? I mean, this is a horrible, wicked, vile religion. And if you ever wonder, you know, I made the comment, you know, that they, re they repress most women. If you ever have a question about that, just watch the news for a while. You'll figure it out. I mean, they do all kinds of unmentionable things to women. You know, if a woman looks at a man, they, or sorry, if, a woman, if they think that a woman looked at a man, there's a lot of ramifications for that. Where basically they make it, you know, to where a woman is not able to get uh, pregnant or have any ch uh, children. Yeah, that's a, that's a religion of love right there. The treatment of women reading, like I said, reading the news should illustrate the fact that Christianity has elevated the status of women, right? Women, you know, oftentimes, you know, were, you know, kind of looked down upon for, you know, uh, you know, throughout history. But what does the Bible do? The Bible actually what? Elevates them. Like I said, Islam has repressed them. There's only one woman ever mentioned in the Quran, and that is Mary, and that's it. They don't want anyone else in there. I mean, women have to go around with their faces covered. The only thing they could do is see out a little slit. They say, well, that's only for the really, really strict Muslims. Don't you want to be, I mean, when the Bible says for you to do something, don't you want to do it? Don't you want to take it literally? Instead of going, well, that thing, that, that. That's why I always found funny, you know, when a Muslim would come up and say, well, that's only for the really, 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 
ones. I take it literally. But if you take it, no. The Word of God is the Word of God. If you believe that's the Word of God, you should take it to the, to the nth degree, and you, you're seeing the, the, you know, you're seeing what that is over in like in Iran and Saudi Arabia and all these Muslim countries, the way that they uh, treat women, that, you know, how they do Sharia law. When there's people that say that they want that, I mean, when there's videos, uh, you know, of them, you know, saying, you know, when you got all these people over here in the United States thinking that Sharia law would be a good thing. They have no clue. No clue. The bottom line for this entire thing is, is obviously that Christianity is not a religion, but it's a relationship of faith. And whereas Muslims go to Medina and, and venerate the, the, the burial place of Muhammad, because remember, Muhammad's still dead, right? He ain't alive. He's dead. He's still in the tomb. But our God is not dead. Our God is alive. The, the, empty tomb, the tomb is empty. He is alive today, right? That is the biggest difference of them all. That is the biggest difference of them all. And so when we look at, you know, uh, look at these, and, you know, and I don't know, maybe next week I'll go into another one, or you know, maybe I'll just you know, I'll pick, another, I'll pick another one probably. But when we look at these ones, and like I said, maybe later on I can go in deeper as far as some of the stuff that Islam believe, you know, believes and, and go and get some more of their writings and how it conflicts with what the Word of God says. But you go through all of these you know, various areas of what they believe and how they believe. And the thing is, is that I'm not, you know what? I don't, you know, I don't wish that a Muslim dies. You know that? I hope, you know, you know, that out of this whole entire thing that it offends them, you say, well, why is that? I hope because that way they're offended by what they believe. I want them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I want them to be saved. I want them to, to come out of that. They can come out of it. And you say, well, how could they possibly, how could a person believe this junk? The Bible says that the devil has blinded the eyes of those. He's blinded them. It's not the fact that they're just like, whoo, yeah, this sounds like a great thing. You know, let's go out and, the, you know, having multiple wives and this, you know, because the whole thing, you know, like I said uh, last week is that they believe that, the men, the men believe that when they die, they get 70 virgins. That's their whole thing. It, it, you know, it, it's a man-centered thing. It's a man-centered religion all around it. But I wish that they were saved. I wish that they would get, you know, that they would be saved. There's nothing in me that goes, you know, I, I wish that a Muslim would die and go into hell. I don't want that. And neither should we. That's why I'm trying to equip us, you know, so that way when we, when we look at these uh, different religions, we look at these different false religions that are out there, because there's only one true way, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember John, you know, 14, 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that no man cometh unto the Father except through me. And that's the whole point of uh, this whole thing. So I know that uh, some have asked uh, questions already. Now, if you have any other questions, I'll be willing to uh, you know, answer them. I believe that they believe in multiple. It depends on, you know, it depends on how good you were to where you go up to high, because I believe they believe in three heavens. Well, if you're really good, like Muhammad, obviously is in the, the upper heaven. That, I said they believe. I didn't say that. I believe. I, I believe that you know that you know that's true. But obviously, I believe that, you know, that they believe in three heavens, and that the you know the ones that are you know exceptional go up to the top ones, which obviously you know they would look at Muhammad as better. You probably get the bottom floor in the basement. <laughs> and like I said, that, I'm not saying that you know the, the Quran teaches that. I'm teaching. Uh, I'm saying that that's what mu uh, some Muslims teach. If they're really, really devout, really orthodox Muslims, I don't even know if, or, if the orthodox and Muslim go together. But if they're really, ortho you know, going along those lines, they'll teach that you know what. If you did not repent, and there's that major sin out there, that confession, you're going to go to hell 
as a Muslim. There's no assurance of salvation. No Muslim, no matter how good that they think that they are or anything else, actually knows. If you, say, if you ask them, do you believe that you're going to heaven? He said, well, no one, no one can know. No one can know. But we know. Now, I'm going to go to the verse. This is one of the verses that, I, uh, that, that we use when we go out, uh, you know, knocking door to door, go out soul winning, is uh, 1 John 5.13. The Bible gives us that assurance. It says, These things I have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may, what? Know that ye have eternal life. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. That you may know. It also says in John 1, 12 that, you know, uh, to many as received him, gave he a power to become the sons of God. As soon as we receive him, he says, you know what? You're a son, you're a daughter of God, you're in the family. Nothing changes that. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> the two contrasting views of, you know what, you know, you have a Muslim out there doing all the, you know, calling for jihad and everything else, trying to kill people and thinking that he's doing this all in the name of Allah. Because that's the other thing is, is that they want to purify the earth of all the infidels, of all those that don't believe, so that way God's kingdom can be set up. In other words, purify means, you know, kill them all. That would be one of the five pillars, and that would probably send them to hell, yes. Tough luck. <laughs> you better have a rich uncle. I mean, that's, that's the sad reality of the whole thing is that there is no assurance of, you know, those five pillars are like the base. Like, you need to do those at least to be, even have a chance to, you know, possibly get into heaven. Those are the things that they must do. Yes, sir? Wine. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Carnal human beings. Mm-hmm. Because of the fact that they have you know, along the lines of most of the time then when people are converted to uh, Islam is because there's a gun to their head and says, you know, believe or else. Yeah, or they grew up that way, yeah. And they, yeah, all there's there yeah, there, right now um, I believe that what I checked is that there are 2.8 billion uh, people who be, you know that say that they're Christians or evangelical Christians and two billion uh, Muslims in the world. So you see how close those numbers are. I mean, and that's the, you know, that's one of those things is is uh. What's, what's ironic in the book of Revelation, and I can't pull it off the top of my head, but the book of Revelation talks about that in the, in, in the last days, that those believers, you know, that are, you know, when the Antichrist is revealed and all the persecution happens, that believers will be, what, beheaded. And that is the, that is the way that Muslims go about executing uh, people. It also talks about in the book of Revelation, you know, the synagogue of Satan. What religion out there What's the only religion that has a synagogue? They, they do, yeah, that was one of the similarities. They believe that uh, Satan is evil, that he's trying to lure people away from God, that he's all that kind of stuff. They do, and that's why they must go out there and convince people. So they do believe that, you know, like I said, there is the similarities in that, you know, in that view, that they believe that there is a Satan. Um, they do believe, you know, that, you know, like I say, they do believe, you know, in, in Jesus. They do believe that he's going to come back at the day of judgment and destroy the Antichrist. They believe, I mean, it sounds very similar in some of their views, but they twist it and they manipulate it and make it sound the way they want it to. But Jesus was only a prophet, remember. That was it. He... Uh 
I'm not going there. <laughs> not every single person that owns a convenience store or a gas station that is, you know, by chance Arab is not Muslim. I mean, you know, you could be an Arab without being. But they probably have, if you talk to them, you know, they probably have come in contact with quite a few. And, you know, there probably is quite a few, especially if they grew up over there. I mean, if they grew up here in the United States, they probably heard a whole bunch of different things. They're usually put to death. They're usually put to death. If their family finds out that, they, uh, that they've left, you know, the, the faith of Islam, they will either tell them, you better renounce it or you're dead. And it doesn't matter. And it usually comes from the family. The family will kill their children over that. That's why oftentimes when we have missionaries, when we have missionaries that come in that are going to the Muslims, we don't have them on, you know, on camera. Because if that missionary goes back, <laughs> they'll be looking for him and waiting for him. Yep. Some do. Some will actually stay. Some actually stay because what Jesus has done in their life, they will keep it quiet, but they will... They'll try and turn conversations towards Christianity and towards, you know, Christ and towards, because the thing is, and that's one way, you know, that you can bring out, uh, you know, Christianity to them is because they believe that Jesus was the, you know, prophet. And you can sit there and kind of hopefully kind of steer them maybe through that fact. But there are some that will stay around, won't say that they've, you know, believed in Jesus or anything else, you know, but they, you know, they have, and they will try and, you know, go around and then they'll meet other Christians and it's very secretive. So like the stuff you see in the movie about different missionaries like kind of passing stuff around, that's basically how it is. Well, and that's, and sometimes they don't want to do the other ones, you know what, they look at it as, you know what, if they kill me, so what? That's what they look at it. Muslims that have you know turned Christian or you know even like missionaries are over there. They're like, if they kill me, so what? Because where I'm going is better than where I am at now. It's. There's a, a saying. Um, you, are you talking about the, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church? Usually, what happens. In these situations, and you see it in the book of Acts, and that's where that kind of concept you know, came, was when somebody was persecuted, put to death, or anything else, what ended up happening was is that the believers in that area exploded. Because Muslims are not necessarily, I mean, as much as they're suicide bombers and all that kind of going around and hoping they get their, th you know, to be able to do that, a lot of them are, you know, are afraid to die. And that's one of the things that you see with Christians. Christians aren't afraid to die. It's not like we have a death wish. But we're not afraid to die. I mean, the, you know, the whole thing is because is we know that, hey, if we die, we get heaven. But, you know, it's like the Apostle Paul, you know, like the Apostle Paul, he was like, you know what, if I go, awesome. If I, you know, but if I stay, it's for your benefit. Why? Because I'm going to go and I'm going to preach the gospel to you. I'm going to teach you about the Lord. I'm going to do those things about the Lord. So it's like, you know what, that's the reason why that we should never be afraid about sharing our faith. What's the worst that they can do to you? Kill you? You say, well, yeah, I don't want to die. Where are you going to be? You're going to be with him. That's why you see, you know, in, in, you know like with, with Stephen, what does Stephen do when, he, when, he's, uh, when he's being stoned to death? He sits there and he prays and, you know, and worships and he says, you know, I see, uh, you know, I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of, of, the, uh, you know, uh, you know, of God the Father in heaven in glory. And they believe in Daniel and the lion's dead, and, you know, they believe, you know, some of the, those prophets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they'll say it's God. They won't say it's Jesus. Remember, when it contradicts, the Bible is corrupt according to them.
Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things that uh, Muhammad struggled with was the concept of the Trinity, because he said that the Trinity is not in the Bible. That word Trinity is never, and it's true. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. The concept is there. The Bible also uses the word Godhead to, uh, to, to speak of the Trinity. But he had that problem. He says, oh, they're worshiping three gods. No, we're not. He never understood the three-in-one concept. And so he said, no, there's one God, and his name is Allah. That's, that's their, I mean, I, that same Muslim you know, man I, was, you know, I had spoken with, that's what he would say over and over again. Jesus was obviously first century, right? Jesus, you know, first century that he lived at, you know, you know, 33 AD, if you want to go with, you know, that. Muhammad was um, around uh, 600, so about the seventh century. So there's about six, seven hundred years or so, or six, yeah, six, seven hundred years uh, in between them two. And remember, he's the final prophet. Isn't that convenient? Because then all of his theology is supposed to be the one that you're supposed to believe. That's why he says that the, the Bible is corrupt and that they changed it. So he had to come along and correct it. Mm -hmm. Because they were in Medina. It was a large Jewish community, and they would, they, you know, those, that were Jew, uh, those Jews there would, you know, some would convert or some just hated Christianity, and they would teach them how to, how to do that. Because at that time, I believe, yeah, because the... Uh, the, the Bible itself was canonized in the was it fourth century. So they had all the, all the books of the Bible. They had all that, you know, that information out there. They even had Paul, you know, Paul's letters, all that was, uh, was written at that time. But like I say, they, uh, they, they even believe the Gospels. You know how I, and that's, and I can attest to that because that same, that same, you know, Muslim man that I had spoke to showed me in John. He says, I'm going to show you where the Bible says that Muhammad is, com you know, Muhammad was the prophet that was coming. And I said, okay, go ahead. It was in John, I um, I'm trying to remember where I was at. I, I want to say like, you know, John like 12 or something. But it says, uh, it says that, you know, the comforter shall come. He said, that's the prophet Muhammad. I said, no, it's not. He goes, yeah, it is. You know, it's speaking of the, you know, Noah's. I said, no, it's not. He goes, well, who's it speaking of? I said, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. He's the one that, you know, lives inside of us, breathing. Oh, no, 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 that's not true. The Bible's corrupt in that area. It always comes back to that. That's the out that they always have, is that the Bible's corrupt. Because I love him. Because I love him. I wanted him to come, uh, come to Christ. He was trying to win me as I was trying to win him. Uh, he stopped working there, and I never, you know, like all of a sudden one day I went over to there to go talk to him again. He was gone. They said he, you know, that he went someplace else. I don't know. I wish that he was still. I, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know if he. Yeah. He might, have, he might have been. I mean, I, I, you know, I would have loved for him to, you know, to stay there because, you know, I, I truly believe the way the conversation was going that he was, that he would have ended up leaving. And obviously it's easier for him to leave Islam in, in America than it is, you know, over in like, you know, in the Middle East or North Africa and those areas because it's over there, you know, 99% of the population is, you know, in some of those areas is Muslim. So it's like you said, it's very hard for somebody who has been converted to all of a sudden like hide themselves. But like I say, a lot of times they'll go out and they'll, they'll talk to people about Jesus and if they run into the wrong one and they're killed, they look at it as a great thing. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, in the book of Acts. How many times did, you know, I mean, there's times where you know, Paul was like left for dead. You know, they drug his body outside of the city, left him for dead. You know, he laid there for a while and got up, shook up, uh, you know, dust off his feet, went back into the city. Now you say, well, is he stupid? Some would say he is, but that, you know, the Bible says that the love of God constrains us or pushes us. And that's what he wanted to do. And that's what we need to realize that when we, when we talk to people, whether they're Muslim or, you know, Buddhist, Jewish, whatever, we do it out of love. We do it, you know, you know because we want to see them saved. 
I mean, as much as, you know, there were people around, um, when I was, you know, when I first got saved, you know, they were baffled by the fact that I got saved, and I wasn't even a Muslim. There were people that came up, and they said, you got saved? I mean, it was like this whole thing of like, what? Like, almost like it was impossible. Like, I thought that that was impossible. 